What's going on guys? Garrett here from Core Performance and we're out here in Death Valley National Park. One of the hottest places on earth on one of the hottest days of the year. We expect temperatures today to exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're out here to put your burning questions about our Ice Age ecosystem to rest and show you in real time how our equipment works in one of the most austere environments on the planet. Let's get started. Valley and before we hike up to our overlook to start answering your guys' questions and start the video, we're going to take a FLIR reading of our ice plate that we just pulled out of the freezer to show you guys and compare and contrast the difference in temperature after being out here in the scorching Death Valley sun all day. So we're going to show you that FLIR reading now. All right, let's get started guys. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Core Performance and our products, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what we do and the products we provide to keep you cool and safe in austere environments like this here in Death Valley. So what I have on me right now is our safety vest, our ice plate SLK Gen 3, and two ice plates inside of the sleeve. So that provides 100 fluid ounces of hydration with them both together and 50 fluid ounces if you're wearing just one. And then on the side here, I have Ice Flask, which provides 16.9 fluid ounces of hydration. And all of these in the configuration that they're mounted in provide cooling or heating depending on where you are. We definitely don't want that out here right now. But if you mount Ice Flask in its wing configurations around your plate carrier or your safety vest, it will cool you down in that negative space on your body and ice plate will cool you down on your chest here and your back as well. Once you dump excess heat into your ice plates, your body heat will melt that ice down and turn it into chilled water that you can then drink all day long. So let's get into some of the questions that you guys have when you first come across our products. So one of the main questions we get is why not just run a Camelback or another soft bladder? Well, there's three reasons for that that set us apart. One is a thin conformal profile. As you can see, the ice plates are conforming and contouring to my body so that it's comfortable and slim and not in the way, not bulgy and not bulky. The other thing that sets ice plate apart is it provides conductive thermal regulation. So when I put this up against my body, it cools me down. Not only that, but also I can drink from it. So it's taking the water that you would already be carrying on your body and giving it dual purpose because it's actively cooling you down and then you can drink from it. And number three is durability. These products are hard cell hydration, which means they're not gonna burst, they're not gonna bust when you fall on it. We literally will show you that by running over it with our F-150 Betsy. So the other question we get is about another product, Ice Flask. Why don't I just run a normal canteen or water bottle? There's three reasons for that as well. This product is conformal, so it's got great ergonomics. It's designed in the same form factor as the PRC-152 Embitter Military Radio. And so as you can see, it's conforming to my body right here because it has this curvature on the side. The other reason is, again, thermal regulation. So when this is pressed up against my body and in direct contact with my body, it provides that conductive cooling. It's cooling me down and giving my water dual purpose again. And the third reason is that these can nest and stack for excellent storage density in a cooler, in a backpack, in a ruck, wherever you wanna take them, these don't take up a lot of space and they nest perfectly. So the next most popular question that we get about our products is how long do ice plate curve and ice flask last? And the answer is it depends. It depends on things like ambient temperature, direct sunlight exposure, what you're doing, what type of activity you're doing, and your body weight, your mass, all of those things factor into how long your ice plate curve and your ice flask will last. But the general rule of thumb is that typically ice plate curve lasts about two to four hours for cooling and three to five hours for heating. For ice flask itself, it's about 15 to 45 minutes if you're wearing just one ice flask on your body. So another thing that factors into how long your core performance products will last is if you're wearing another type or multiple types of thermoregulatory equipment. So that could be things like multiple ice flasks or multiple ice plates along with ice vents and ice sleeves. 
All of those things are gonna factor in to how long your products last and how cool you can get. So a lot of people ask us, what does wattage mean? We have that listed on our website as one of the units of measure for how long ice plate and ice flask last. So it's pretty simple actually. Wattage is the power used for heating and cooling measured in watts. It shows how much energy is delivered per second to regulate temperature. We pair it with duration to fit varied uses from environmental inoculation and temperature extremes to military professionals, everyday users like hikers, backpackers, and everything in between. Another question that we often get is, can I use ice plate and ice flask for heating? The answer is absolutely yes. Just fill them with hot water and do so at a temperature that you're comfortable with and definitely not in a place like this. Another question is, so what do I do when my ice plate or ice flask melts? The answer is, you drink it. If you also have the infrastructure around you to swap it out with another frozen one, you can do that and that'll keep you going even farther, even longer. It is designed to be a booster rocket. It's designed to get you there. It's definitely gonna melt along the way depending on the environment you're in and all of those other factors we discussed before. If you're in a place like Death Valley and you're going for a hike up to this viewpoint where we are, then it's designed to get you there so that you're not feeling exhausted on the way up. It's gonna get you here and you're gonna be able to drink that ice cold water that your body has created by dumping that excess heat into your ice plates which have then melted down. And now you can sit back, relax, enjoy the view and take a drink. So how hard is it to swap out an empty or melted ice plate for a new full frozen one on the fly? And the answer is very simple. It's just a matter of opening the plate bag on your vest or on IMS Pro Gen 3. And pulling out your ice plate and swapping it out for a new one. Just like that. So why do ice flask multi-packs exist? So ice flasks come in multi-packs of seven and 18, and this is designed so that you can take advantage of ice flask storage density and nesting capability. So for your favorite cooler or freezer bag or backpack, you can nest as many of these as you want, and it gives you dual purpose. So if you're at a backyard barbecue and you don't want to use the sacrificial bag of ice, you can use these to keep your food, your drinks cool, and once they melt down and deplete, you can have ice cold drinking water without taking up space with bottled water um, and without having to deal with that melted sacrificial bag of ice. Another question that we get a lot, is ice plate bulletproof? The answer is no. Ice plate does not replace armor. It goes in between armor. And while it greatly reduces back face deformation when worn close to the body in between armor, uh, even soft body armor, it does not replace armor. It is not bulletproof. So in that same vein, is ice flask bulletproof? No, ice flask is just a regular water bottle that is in the same form factor as the PRC 152 Emitter military radio. It is not bulletproof. So how can you wear ice plate? And the answer is a safety vest, plate carrier, a chest rig, our backpack, or on a ruck. So a lot of people have asked, can you put ice plate or should you put ice plate into your plate bag? And the answer is, it depends on your application. If you're doing a safety vest like I have right now in this setup, then yes, you would just insert your ice plate curve directly into the plate bags and you're good to go. If you're a military professional and you're using ice plate curve in conjunction with armor, then you would use something like our IMS Pro Gen 3 to hold your ice plate between your body and if you're wearing ice plate in conjunction with armor, IMS Pro Gen 3 is the thinnest profile way to carry 1.5 liters of hydration and thermal regulation on your body. Another question we get is, why is ice plate modeled after a medium ESAPI plate? And the answer is, is because ice plate uh, modeled after a medium ESAPI plate is going to be the thinnest profile to carry water um, and hydration on your body at all times. They can conform to your body um, and be out of the way, not bulgy, not bulky. And also, the medium ESAPI armor plate profile fits 80% of the US population. So it is prolific among military professionals and also just for sizing purposes for recreational outdoor enthusiasts, fitness enthusiasts, the list goes on. So some people ask, how do I 
mount ice plate curve to a plate carrier. So the answer is you would use our IMS Pro Gen 3 like we discussed before. So that's gonna be that little pocket that's gonna hold your ice plate in between your body and your armor plate. If you are wearing something like our ice plate Exo Gen 3 plate carrier, it already has that internal Velcro loop field. So you just slap on the IMS Pro Gen 3, slide in your ice plate curve and you're good to go. If you're rocking a plate carrier that lacks internal Velcro loop field, then you're gonna to wanna to use IMS Pro Gen 3 and Ice Plate Curve in conjunction with our Catamaran Gen 3, which is a universal Velcro adapter panel that just clips on, mollies on to your plate carrier, any plate carrier on the market, and allows you to take advantage of the cooling benefits of Ice Plate Curve. Another question we get often is, if I mount Ice Plate Curve to the rear of my plate carrier in an external configuration, will I still get the cooling, heating, and hydration benefits that it offers when it's in direct contact with my body? The answer is no. It will only provide hard cell external hydration. So how do I use or wear ice flask? So you can use it in your favorite cooler, like with that storage density and that cube storage and that nesting that we talked about earlier to keep your food and drinks cold. You can put it in your favorite bag for a ruck. You can wear it on your plate carrier or chest rig. There's also a new capability upcoming with our ice flask sling holster, which will be more of a recreational outdoor application, which allows you to carry ice flask on its own with a sling. Another question we get is, will ice flask when it's mounted in a dangler configuration provide thermal regulation benefits? The answer is no, not really. It will only provide thermal regulation like that cooling and heating uh, when it's mounted in a wing configuration when it's in direct contact with your body. So if it's in a dangler configuration, it's gonna be hydration only. Another question that we get is, why is ice flask modeled after the PRC-152 amateur radio? The answer is because of how prolific NATO pouches for that specific radio are and the ergonomics of that radio. If you can wear a PRC-152 amateur radio, you can wear an ice flask. Can you drink from ice plate curve through a gas mask? As far as ice plate curve goes, no, but we hear our Seaburn customers and we're working on a solution with ice plate Gen 3. Can you drink ice flask through a gas mask? As of right now, no, but that is something that could be possible with an attachment that can come in the near future. Can you connect a drink tube to ice flask? Yes, you can. It has the same thread standard, but it's not ideal because ice flask is not equipped with a one-way valve that allows you to drink from ice plate curve. So does core performance make pouches? No, not really. We mostly focus on making sleeves and holsters for our thermal regulation products. So like IMS Pro Gen 3 for ice plate curve and the ice flask wing holster and the ice flask molly holster. Does ice plate and ice flask add weight? The answer is yes, of course. Like any equipment, it's going to add a little bit of weight, but we designed our Ice Age ecosystem with weight savings in mind. That is one of the pinnacles of our design process. So uh, it's gonna be the same amount of weight that you would have when carrying any kind of apparatus that holds water. How do you make sure that your ice plate or ice flask doesn't bulge out after it's been frozen? So the answer is, is that both of these are equipped with a fill line to tell you exactly where to stop when filling it. And also you wanna make sure that you back out the cap a little bit on each of these so that you can let air in while it's freezing because ice or water expands when it freezes. All right, so we just walked down from up there. We were up there for about an hour and a half. And now we're gonna take the final reading to see how long this front ice plate last. And the reason that we're not testing the back one as well is because I was drinking out of it while we were up there, so it's not gonna be accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and show you the FLIR reading now. To recap, while answering common questions about our equipment in this video, this was also a real world demonstration of ice plate curves performance in one of the hottest places on earth. Death Valley in July, where temperatures soared past 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a FLIR thermal camera, we recorded our front ice plate fresh out of the freezer at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. After 90 minutes in direct sun, worn inside an ice plate SLK Gen 3 safety vest, it measured 65 degrees Fahrenheit, a 26 degree increase under extreme heat. Even at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, ice plate stayed well below skin temperature, which is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 
maintaining a thermal differential that pulled heat from the body for consistent conductive cooling. With the second ice plate and ice flask in the system, thermal regulation was distributed across multiple contact points, slowing heat gain, reducing injury risk, preserving cognitive function, and delivering crucial hydration. This wasn't a lab study, but a real-world demo of ice plate and ice flasks thermal buffering in extreme conditions. That's it for this video. We hope you guys enjoyed our trip to Death Valley to showcase what core performance gear can do in extreme temperatures. Got questions? Drop them below. If this was helpful, like, subscribe, and as always, stay frosty.